Welcome again, everybody, and thank you for joining the InfoSim Global Webinar Day on January the 28th. Our topic today is Presentation, Automation, Integration, Tailoring StableNet to Your Needs. My name is Dietmar Kneidel, Director of Sales Europe with InfoSim, and I will be moderating today's event. Joining us from our headquarter office here in Würzburg, Germany, is my colleague, Dr. David Hock. David is a senior consultant, research and development here with us at InfoSim. Good afternoon, David. Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome. So David is going to guide us through the presentation and the live demo part today. But before I hand over things to him, I have a couple of items that I would like to inform you about. First off, all of you are automatically muted just to keep down the background noise. So for us to be able to answer your questions, please type them in the questions window at the bottom of the GoToWebinar application. As usual, we will be taking care of all of your questions either directly in the chat or at the end of today's webinar in our Q&A session. So please don't hold back. Let us know when you have a question or remark at any time. Also, please be aware we're recording this event and uh, you will be notified with a short email tomorrow on how to access that recording. And finally, we're again giving away three Amazon gift cards on this global webinar day. So I recommend answering the trivia question that's part of a short questionnaire you will see when leaving today's webinar. And uh, I've heard that the question this time is not that hard to answer, so uh, good luck with that. That's all from my end so far, so I'd like to go ahead, turn control over to our presenter, Dr. David Hock. David, it's your show now. Enjoy. Thank you very much. Welcome again from my side. So today I will briefly cover the data visualization in StableNet, the southbound and northbound integration with interfaces, and then I will show some live examples for the different interfaces. Before I start with the presentation, I briefly uh, want to come up with a metaphor. So uh, since our company InfoSim's headquarter is located in Würzburg in a wine region here in Germany, I want to compare our product briefly with some good wine. So, StableNet is a unified network management product and we think that we are doing quite a good job with offering that product the same way like here the region is offering a good wine. But to offer a good wine, it's not just the presentation in the bottle and uh, how to sell the wine, but it's also to have the right ingredients in the wine. So you need to have grapes in the wine so you can uh, make a good wine. Compa uh, putting this back to the unified network management, you need to have the right data in the system, the right information in the system to use it for reports, for weather maps, for all kind of monitoring, configuration, fault management in the product. Furthermore, it's not just about selling the wine, but it's also about selling the complete product around it, all the other things that go together with the wine. Putting this back to the unified network management context, if you are one of the partners of InfoSim and you might think of some multi-service provider portfolio, you are maybe thinking of how to combine StableNet and the data of StableNet with other uh, services you are offering, or if you are one of our end customers or uh, someone being interested to become an end customer, you, are, you might be wondering how to present StableNet information in your company internal portal to other colleagues in the company, to your management. So this is also an important question. And this is where the interfaces, the different interfaces come into, um, into play. So in the middle of that picture I'm showing here, we have the StableNet core. And besides the StableNet core, we have all the southbound interfaces, which can roughly be summarized as those interfaces offering all the data that is entered into StableNet. And we have all the northbound interfaces on top, which can roughly be summarized as all the interfaces which are somewhat getting data out of StableNet and are used to put the data somewhere else, for instance, for company dashboards or to trigger some alarm scripts to include them in some portfolio. So first of all, I want to briefly cover the data visualization in StableNet itself. So this is the StableNet course, uh, core in my picture. So as I said before, it is necessary to reach an optimal presentation. It's not just about having the data, but it's important to present it in an optimal way to your colleagues, to your management, to your end customers, whoever is interested in the data. 
And um, I think this could be a topic for uh, for one or several webinars in itself. So I want to cover this just really briefly here. But StableNet offers a lot of different visualization uh, possibilities where some of them uh, are shown here as an example on that slide. So you have different tree structures where you have the nodes of the, um, the nodes of the system with their measurements and their monitors. You have different kinds of graphs where you can visualize information in the system. You have weather maps that give you a possibility to create dashboards for your customers, for your management. You have geographical alarm maps where you can display information on geographical maps, uh, including drill down to zoom in up to a street or building level. You have alarm dashboards that you can use in our product since the new release 7.5 to create a combination of different charts, spreadsheets, tables, and uh, weather maps. And you also have all types of reports as PDF, Excel, or HTML that you can uh, manually create on demand or that you can regularly create, archive and send by email. And there are a lot of other things I could mention here. So how to get the good grapes to create the wine? How to find the best ingredients for StableNet, the best data? Here I briefly want to repeat that StableNet is a unified network management system, system combining the three areas of fault, performance and configuration in a single product together with a powerful and flexible discovery and inventory. And actually to have the possibility to pro provide all those different uh, aspects of configuration uh, of network management in one product, you need to have different sources of data. Alarm data, including things like traps, event data, measurement data, including things like monitoring information from servers, from network components, from entire applications or business processes, and configuration data, including, for instance, information that is needed for backup or configuration, for policy checking, for vulnerability checking. Again, I would say this is almost a topic for a separate webinar. So StableNet for that purpose offers different southbound interfaces starting from SNMP, WMI and TRAP templates depending on what the components offer to backup and restore scripts for configuration management area, business process scripts and extensions to our StableNet embedded agent, the small banana pie based device that can, uh, agent device that can be used uh, for remote sites up to external measurements and log and chi which are which offer the possibility to create more complicated, um, more complex uh, scripts and uh, inter uh, templates to, to read data in the stable net. On the other part, we also have the northbound integration. So if you have your wine, what you can put together with your wine and how you can take your wine to put it together with other things to give the best presentation to outside. So here in the northbound interface, we first of all, we have weather maps and reports that are directly created out of StableNet with the graphical user interface or configured with the graphical user interface and then can be accessed also from the web portal or can be sent automatically um, as emails. We have alarm scripts that help to trigger actions based on things happening in the system, especially in context of fault management. And we have servlets and REST API which slightly differ in the precise way they are used but which have both in common that they are web services that can be uh, accessed using normal HTTPS access that is basically similar to a normal access to the web portal. So this is very comfortable, for instance, with regards to firewalling. You don't need to set up any additional ports, but if you can reach, up to, uh, reach the web portal, you can also reach servlets and REST API. I think this is... Um, Almost enough of theory already. I want to go into the live examples to show you just uh, some concrete things that can be done with StableNet in that area with the interfaces. So the first example I want to show um, is regarding SDN and NFV management. For those of you who are not fami familiar with the terminology, it is explained on this slide. So actually software-defined networking where you have a separation of control plane and data plane of network devices and network functions virtualization and if we where you are mo moving more and more of the functionality from powerful network devices to cloud environments 
those are both terms that have, be, ha have been heavily discussed in the last years and there is a lot of movement going on in this area and of course this has also been um, looked on from a management perspective. But what both terms have in common is that there is no clear standard to be seen, there is no clear one definite leader solution. So in the SDN area we have different open source and proprietary controllers. The most popular might be Open Daylight or Onos or other solutions based on those. There are also completely other proprietary controllers. Not even Some of them are not even running on OpenFlow, which is the most common protocol here. There is no definite leader, as I said, and there is no common standard API. It's quite the same in the NFV area. We have a lot of different cloud computing platforms, OpenStack, CloudStack. There are also some proprietary ones, including Microsoft Azure, VMware, Amazon Web Services. There's again no definite leader. Probably there will be a coexistence of several of those solutions, and there's no common standard API to talk to all of those. And what we should not forget is that besides all that SDN and NFV environments, there are also still all the legacy components that are in the network and we will probably have mixed environments. We are rather not uh, supposing people to directly uh, throw away all the hardware and get only new things, but they will have a mixed environment. So for this we need a complete management for all the different things that can be out there. And actually StableNet is offering this by a generic interface that is available already now and that can be used or, or a set of interfaces and those interfaces can be used to um, write specific templates on based of these interfaces and to interconnect. I will now briefly show this in my live demo. So here I have a StableNet system. And in my StableNet system, actually I'm going to show briefly the OpenStack integration and Open Daylight integration. So let's first start with Open, uh, open Daylight. To that extent, I open my web browser and here I'm logged into an Open Daylight um, controller, one of the SDN controllers out there. And in this Open Daylight controller running here, I have different switch, uh, open flow switches which are connected to the controller. And if I zoom in here, you see that they are named Open Flow 1, Open Flow 2, and so on and so forth. Now, now going back to StableNet, I will start a discovery for Open Daylight. If we have a look at this discovery, I provide an, I, uh, an IP of the Open Daylight server, a port, and so on and so forth. And if I start this discovery job, and I go to my inventory, I will see that in a moment as a child of this demo folder there will be a new SDN folder where the SDN devices appear. So first we have here the SDN folder with the mini core. Mini core is just the host name of the Open Daylight switch, uh, uh, sorry, Open Daylight controller where the Open Daylight instance is running. And after a moment, we will see all the different open, daylight, uh, open flow switches popping up. So they are coming one by another. And what you can actually see here, I have one of the switches selected. And you see right now that the tree is increasing. More and more of the switches are appearing here. And on the right side, you just see that there is a single switch. There is no neighborhood yet. This is because the discovery is still running and the links have not been discovered yet. Now, suddenly, we have the device with the different neighbors because now the links have been discovered and actually, yes, I got a co confirmation that the discovery is finished. And now you see that we have the different measurements popping up here. So one by one, the devices are recognized and are measured and turn green as the state is indicating that they are okay. So jumping back to the browser, you can see the same topology that you see in StableNet also in the browser. So this is integrated. Second example that I want to show is OpenStack in the NFV area. So I go back to my browser and we have a look at an OpenStack installation running here in Würzburg and we have different instances running in this OpenStack installation. Now if I jump to StableNet and I move to the measurement theme, I see here different measurements for OpenStack. Those measurements can also be started with a discovery. I skipped this step here for reasons of time, so now they are already set up and you see the different nodes that correspond also to the nodes that were shown in the web. Now I take one of the nodes in the web and I will just suspend this instance. So I get a 
feedback from the web browser that the, uh, the virtual machine has been suspended. And now if I move back to StableNet and I wait for some seconds, for the demo I set up the interval to be between 30 seconds and one minute to recognize it without any grace time. So we should uh, see in a moment that there will be an alarm coming up that one of the devices has been suspended. Just a quick question from, from my end, David. Um, the browser window you showed before, that was not StableNet, that's the uh, OpenStack element manager, I assume. That is right. That are the normal APIs and uh, web portals that are offered by OpenStack and Open Daylight. Okay, yes. because you had me confused now. <laughs> Thanks for asking. So while we are waiting for this to pop up, I can also switch again to the discovery and show you that the OpenStack discovery that is used for those measurements, it is also working in a <coughs> similar way. We are setting up an IP and port of the OpenStack, including password and all uh, information, and then we can use this for the discovery. And here, okay, just missed the moment by being in the discovery. Now we actually have an alarm and we see that the device is now suspended. If I open the analyzer on this measurement, we can actually see that right now it is suspended before it was working. And here you can actually see that while giving today's morning webinar for the Asia Pacific zone, I did the same thing and after two hours I put it back up to resume. So you see that this data is also measured. Okay, this brings me back to PowerPoint. So we have seen that I can discover a mixed legacy and SDN and a free environment with StableNet using the interfaces. In this case, on the right side, I'm showing which interfaces have been used. This has been mostly the REST API to create the uh, entities in StableNet in the inventory, the external measurements for the OpenStack part, and also the weather maps. In this case, no manually created weather map, but an automated weather map to show the topology. The next example I have, I will not show it live because this is actually running in our CTO's home environment and I don't have access to that one, but I will at least briefly sketch the idea how this is working. So in this case, I'm addressing smart home environments with Internet of Things. And here you can imagine that our CTO has one of our stable net embedded agents on a banana pie base, uh, base back at his home. And this banana pie uh, base device, this SNEA, S-N-E-A, is connected to a webcam, to several IP-based power units that are measuring the power usage and the temperature of the room where they are located. It is connected to the outdoor temperature sensor that is measuring the outdoor temperature. And it is also connected to several heatings. Um, actually, it's radiators, maybe better. I, I just couldn't find a better icon to show that. And um, so here we are different, uh, using different interfaces to visualize that. So we have SNMP, WMI, trap templates for those devices who support it. For other devices, we are using business process scripts. And based on that, we can create weather maps and also alarm scripts. So I don't show it live, but I show two uh, screenshots of the live system. So one, uh, one screenshot here is a weather map. So um, I took a floor plan here um, just to visualize that. It's again not this one of our CTO, but it's a, <laughs> a similar floor plan to visualize uh, you how this looks like. So you have uh, different temperature sensors in different rooms and you also have the operation states of the power unit so you can know if there are devices plugged in or not. Then besides that, you have a webcam picture. In this case, this is a real picture in front of the house of our CTO. Thank you, Marius, where you can actually see um, what is going on there. Then we have the outdoor temperature. On, uh, on the bottom left side here, we have the fridge. This can also be realized with one of the power units. So if the power usage is going up, you, you can imagine that this might be related to the fridge being open. So if the kids forget to close the fridge, you can get an alarm then. And on the bottom right of the weather map, I included two ch uh, analyzer charts from StableNet as pictures. One analyzer chart is showing the temperature of uh, outdoor temperature of the last 24 hours. So it indicates that during the night, of course, temperature is colder than during the day. 
and the second picture is showing the power usage of the heating. So this is like the, the gas consumption of the heating if you heat up your home and actually you see that during the night the heating is not working um, as during the day so the power consumption is lower. A second screenshot that I have from this, from this setup is actually um, an analyzer chart over roughly the last three weeks which is showing the outdoor temperature of the last three weeks. And here we have um, two example webcam pictures um, from that weather map that I just put in here. So um, this is a screenshot during the snowy time some days ago and this is a screenshot when the snow has uh, gone away. The last example I want to show in uh, this webinar is uh, regarding advanced reporting. So to start this example, I uh, briefly want to introduce the, the situation at our customer where we, are, where we actually realized this example with StableNet. So one of our US customers actually has a rough, uh, roughly 9,000 remote sites, a bit more than that. And at each of those remote sites, there is uh, some number of static information uh, like the postal address of the remote site, the geographical location of the site, a location code, uh, an internal company location code of this uh, site. And there is also the committed information rate per site, which uh, the CIR, which is actually indicating the amount of bandwidth, the, the maximum bandwidth a, a, a remote site is expected to use during the day. Besides that, we have dynamic information which is collected on a daily basis. So every day we collect the maximum used bandwidth over all sites as a report. So for each site we check the maximum bandwidth that has been used during this day to check if it was exceeding the CIR or not. I mean it cannot, sorry, it cannot exceed the CIR, but we are actually checking if it exceeds 70% of the CIR, so we know if the CIR should be increased. So besides that, we have a management request that the management every second week wants a report over the last 14 days indicating how often 70% of the CIR have been uh, exceeded. And they also want to use, uh, th they want to know the maximum used bandwidth over 14 days per site. So to reach this, we have to join the static information and the 14 single day reports that have been earlier created to one single report with some additional formula cating, uh, calculating all the needed values. Now let's look at the traditional process that has been used before the introduction of StableNet to this customer. In the traditional process, the raw data has been prepared by the previous network management system used, so they, uh, they got output per day, on a per day base of the different interface usages. They saved this to the file system, then somebody manually opened an Excel file, probably the last version of two weeks ago, and there was some, there was some overview that is with formulas calculating automatically. There was some static data of the locations and then there was the old data from two weeks ago and this two weeks ago data would actually be updated to calculate the new report. After having done all this manually, it would have been archived with some uh, certain name and it would be emailed to the management manually. Now with StableNet, this process could be, uh, could be fully automized. So f I, I will show this uh, parts of this live in a moment, but just to briefly explain. So there is a one-time preparation. You can now upload an Excel template to StableNet. So basically you one time create the template with the formula and you upload it to StableNet. Then you create an Excel report based on this template. You select the data in StableNet that is needed. So in this case, the interfaces of the last 14 days, the bandwidth and then you select who should be email recipients. And StableNet will automatically replace all the data by the new data in the template, will update the Excel file and will directly um, send out the new Excel file. Saves more than 20 hours per week now for that customer. Um, I briefly stop here and move to the live demo. Dietmar, you can briefly comment on the webinar, please. <laughs> Thank you for letting me in like that. Um, as you see, this is uh, a, a more complicated area of reporting of StableNet. And uh, when preparing this webinar, we figured out that we could probably talk about this uh, sole topic uh, for another half hour. 
And that's why we've decided to throw in an additional Global Webinar Day. I've just uploaded the uh, invite to that Global Webinar Day in the handout section of GoToWebinar. So you are able to download that small PDF that tells you Global Webinar Day is going to be happening today in two weeks. Um, the topic is going to be Impress Your Management with Funky Reports. And this will be a webinar solely concentrating on all the areas of reporting with a special focus on this type of Excel report because it really, really saves a lot of time and you can do a lot of really uh, interesting and, well, funky uh, things with that. So uh, we're going to announce that uh, probably early next week. We're going to send out invites uh, to that webinar as well. Um, but you, since you joined this webinar, are the first ones to know. And if, again, you can download that little PDF that gives you uh, pretty much the invite we're going to send out in, uh, in about a week anyhow. Thank you, Dietmar. So showing this live very briefly, we have an Excel file here with some static information in the Excel file like Okay, this has been anonymized, but it's like the, the different locations and lo uh, location codes. Then we have the CIRs for the different locations. And then we have the different uh, dates where the single reports um, are brought together using formulas from the different sheets. And in the back, we have some formula which is counting all the lines that are exceeding 70% of the CIR and calculating the maximum bandwidth over the different sheets. And in the bottom, we have the different sheets. And actually, those sheets, they are automatically created by StableNet with the report. Jumping briefly into StableNet, I will not be able to create this report live now because it runs quite a time, because it's aggregating a lot of data. And after all, I'm not at the customer system. But at least, please have a look at this report structure. So the report consists of 14 different rows. Each of the row will, uh, rows will be one of the Excel sheets. Each of the rows corresponds to one day. So if I take as an example day minus four, this is actually uh, interface max bandwidth table, top n zero, so it's showing all uh, interfaces in this case. You can put some filters here at the customer side to have the main interfaces. And I have an offset of, offset of four days because I'm not looking at today or yesterday, but four days ago. And I'm doing this for all the days. And if you look at the report type definition, you see that it's an Excel report with an Excel template, which has been uploaded here. And it is scheduled for be run in an interval of every two weeks. That's it with a live demo. Summing up, you can do funky Excel reports with the main sheet being ready as a template, creating a report, and putting the stable net data into it. And uh, as I said before, these are just some of the examples you can do with interfaces. Actually, when having a brief look at our cl last 12 global webinars in 2015, I saw that there have been uh, many interfaces used in other webinars. Uh, just have a look at it. The, there are links on it. So when uh, Dietmar uh, will upload the slides for you, you can click, click on the links. Uploading right now. Thank you. So we have the mobile app where we have the REST API and servlets in use. We have weather maps shown by Harold Hoon in July this, uh, last year, where we have all the different weather map options. Application monitoring shown by Matthias Schmid in September with a lot of different templates, external measurements, business scripts, and so on and so forth. That actually brings me to the Q&A slide. Which again is my part uh, to start speaking. Thank you very much, David. Um, as David has mentioned, I am currently uploading the slides we've used for this webinar um, to the handout section. Should be popping up any second. Here they are, tailoring stable to your needs. And I'm going to upload in a second a another version of uh, the slides. Uh, we have, um, since part of this uh, presentation uh, we've uh, held before, uh, we've added a few more uh, examples to the slides. So we have the slides in the version you've seen them uh, today. And we have uh, with a little bit more extended version with a little bit more uh, examples to make uh, all what we've explained more vivid. 
Um, talking about questions, we had a number of questions during your presentation, David. Uh, some of them we answered directly, and uh, I've picked a few to uh, use here in our Q&A. So one of the questions uh, was evolving around um, SDN uh, in your example uh, about SDN and NFV. You briefly showed the uh, open daylight and the uh, open stack. And the question is actually, is uh, the StableNet SDN functionality limited to these two technologies or is there more in stock? Could you perhaps elaborate on that? Thank you for bringing this up. Thank you for the question. So actually, um, as I said before, we are focusing on the generic interface. The interface is there, and based on this, with templates, we can support different SDN and NFV environments. I have shown open daylight, but we are also working uh, uh, on honors and looking at that in the NFV area, we also have uh, ready templates for VMware vSphere. Um, I didn't show that today due to the limited time, but we also have this one and there are others coming up. As I mentioned, CloudStack is an issue, there are others. So this is <clears throat> just an interface and it can be used for different um, things. All right. I already got feedback from the attendee who asked the question, so that's uh, all he wanted to know, I guess. Um, and uh, there were actually two or three questions that were pretty much uh, evolving around the same area. So all the things you've shown us today, you've shown them in our demo server. So uh, several of our attendees would like to know if are we just talking about features that are available on our demo server or are those features that are ready to be used out there in the field? Uh, question is, are they available in, stale, uh, in StableNet as of now? Okay, so the external measurements that are used for the SDN and NFV integration have been around since StableNet 6. The REST API is available since StableNet 7, uh, StableNet version 7, um, for instance, for the mobile app as well. So this can be used. Just write the templates and it's here to go. The same for the Internet of Things. This can be done with the current StableNet version and also the Excel report. This is included since 7.5.1 to have Excel uh, templates and there will be additional features come, uh, coming with 7.5.3 which will come out in some weeks from now and which will be also covered in the special webinar for that topic. Okay, thank you very much. And there is a question that just popped up a second ago. Uh, one of our attendees would like to know if the admin GUI is running on Java. I think you can answer that pretty quick. Yeah, so the rich client GUI is running on Java, but this is not like installing a separate Java virtual machine to uh, before being able to install it, but actually our Java is included in the software itself, so it comes with the own uh, runtime environment, so you just install StableNet and you will have the Java with it without having trouble with ha having your, to update your Java or something, yes. Okay, we'll give that attendee a couple of seconds, maybe if he has an additional question. Um, there was one question that I found of particular interest uh, because that is something we hear a lot and uh, it's evolving around uh, the amount of know-how you have to have in order to uh, actually use these interfaces. So the question is how complex is, is the usage of those interfaces in terms of time needed, in terms of programming experience, in terms of uh, uh, stable net know-how, etc. Maybe you can elaborate on that a little bit. Thank you very much. This is also a very good question. So um, regarding the knowledge that is needed, we have some of our interfaces that can be used and configured completely out of the graphical user interface, thinking of reports or weather maps. And we have other um, interfaces that are that demand a, a, a bit more of complex, uh, complexity in the usage, a bit more of knowledge, thinking of external measurements, business scripts, where you have to write scripts, where you have to have some programming knowledge, maybe XML knowledge, regular expression knowledge. So this highly depends on the um, different interfaces. Um, regarding the time effort it, ta it takes, it's actually similar. We have some of the templates that can be, uh, some of the interfaces that can be used right away. So we have people using them when working the first time with StableNet in our 
typical training. They can directly, at the second day of the training, they will spend an hour or two to create uh, templates based on our interfaces. Um, other interfaces take special trainings that are offered by us or we can also offer to, um, to create uh, those templates for the interfaces based on professional services. So this really highly depends on what interface we are talking about, but we are always happy to talk to you about this. Thank you. Okay, thank you, David. Um, final remark: We had also a actually a number of questions um, uh, around the smart home Internet of Things topic, but uh, we will get to those after the webinar because we've already overstepped uh, our 30-minute time limit uh, by six or seven minutes, so this would be a little bit too lengthy. Um, but if there is more interest on that topic, uh, we could, of course, throw in an, another global webinar day. Uh, so just let us know if you have more questions. So again, thank you very much, David, for the presentation and live demo. If you uh, flip over, I think, two more slides, then, uh, yes, thank you, of course. Um, then uh, uh, this is just a quick overview. We have more resources available on a number of topics on our website. Feel free to browse uh, the resource area. And uh, I'd like to thank everyone for joining our session today. As I've mentioned earlier, we will provide you with a recording of this webinar tomorrow with a short email. And we're also going to keep this session open for a few more minutes in case anyone from our audience decides to type in another question. So feel free, um, let us know uh, what your interest is. And uh, again, as I've mentioned before, so we're giving away three Amazon gift cards, so please do us a favor, answer the trivia question in the short questionnaire you're going to be presented with when leaving today's webinar. Well, um, I guess that's all from us today. Uh, David, any final remarks from your end? Stop shaking your head, say something nice. Sorry for overextending the time for some minutes. I hope it was worth it to see the live examples and uh, have a nice day, everybody. Thank you. All right, same from my end. Uh, enjoy the rest of your day and goodbye.